Welcome to Kids Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2013 movie, Planes. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we see a plane named Dusty whose job is to fertilize the fields. This plane loves racing and because of that, he's always dreaming about racing even when he's doing some serious work. When he gets free time from his work, he has just one activity and that is to go to a scheduled area and practice his racing skills. He always practices aerobatic maneuvers in his spare time, dreaming of becoming a racer. His dreams are scorned by his mechanic friend Dottie. He, however, has another friend named Chuck who's always supportive of him. One day, while Dusty is in the air trying to practice, he feels like there is a technical fault in him because he feels a little off. He goes on to decide that he's going to go to his friend Dottie, the mechanic, to have himself checked. He makes his way to the workshop where Dottie goes on to take a look at him. When he is getting himself checked, Chug gets there and goes on to tell Dusty that he's been doing well in his practice of racing. Dottie gets to know that they have been trying to get into racing, which doesn't sit well with her, and she goes on to scold both of them for even thinking of becoming professional racers because it could be dangerous for them. She tells them not to take part in any such activities again. Just as they talk, Chug and Dusty go on to watch an ad where they get to learn something about a race. Chug now goes on to tell Dusty that the manual they have been following while practicing is not really that detailed, so they are going to have to take someone else's help too, so that they can become good racers. They then remember that there is a retired plane named Skipper hoping that they would train them. Both of them right away approach him. Both of them request him to teach them racing, but the man goes on to refuse it right away. Dusty goes on to beg him to teach them at least something of use, but he makes it abundantly clear that he is not at all going to teach them anything, and both of them leave with long faces. Dusty and Chug still make their way to the race, and there, Dusty sees that the last three-time winner, Rip Slinger, is also there. And it's very much clear that he is going to win this time, too. Many planes get there to take part in the race, and only the top will be selected for the final race. The race gets started, and everyone takes to the air right away. When Dusty makes a start, everyone out there goes on to make fun of him. But he still does not lose heart and starts flying. Even after trying his best, he's still the sixth among all the other planes. So he's not going to be able to take part in the final competition, and Dusty's really upset about it. He then goes back to work, as we see him working in the fields again. And while he works, he notices that Skipper has been keeping an eye on him. One day, when he's working in the fields, he's approached by another plane, who goes on to tell him that they found illegal fuel in one of the planes that was in the top five so the illegal plane has been eliminated from the race. And since Dusty was sixth in the race, he is welcome to join them as he is now in the top five. When Dusty gets to hear this, he's over the moon because his dream of becoming a proper racer is finally going to come true. Chug is also there and is really happy for his friend. We then go on to see Dusty standing in front of a map. He's trying to figure out the routes he's gonna have to go through in his race. That is when he's joined by Skipper, who goes on to tell him that he shouldn't be taking part in the race. He tells Dusty that he has neither the skill, nor does he have the speed. Skipper then tells him to report in the ground early in the morning. The next morning, we go on to see that Skipper has already started training him. Skipper goes on to tell Dusty to fly as high as he can. Dusty takes the orders from the trainer and flies high right away. He keeps flying higher and higher, but after getting to a certain height, he starts to lose his balance, and he's not able to control himself at all. Dusty right away gets back to the ground where Skipper is waiting for him. He goes on to admit that he's scared of too much height and goes on to add that 100 feet is his limit. Skipper, however, goes on to tell him that they do not have to focus on height yet. The actual focus should be on speed. Dottie then goes on to make some changes into Dusty's engine, and his speed improves right away. He then goes on to put Air Force's logo on himself and makes his way to a camp where many racers have gathered. These racers have come from different countries around the world, and Dusty meets a female racer named Ishani who came from India. There, Dusty also sees the top racer Rip, who seems to be really arrogant. 
He doesn't like talking to the other racers and even goes on to make fun of Dusty. The next day their race gets started and they are told that they're going to have to go around the whole world in this race and the first route they are going to take is from New York to Iceland. The race gets started and we go on to see that all the planes are flying high up in the sky, but Dusty doesn't have the guts to do it. He's still under 1,000 feet. He takes too much time getting to their first destination and it turns out he's the last one to get there and because of too much cold, his wings also start to be a little damaged already. He then goes on to contact Chug. Chug puts him through to Skipper who tells Dusty that in the next part of the race, he's going to have to fly a little higher or he better quit the race already. That night, the planes are to take their next flight and in their next flight, they have to go to Germany from Iceland and one of the planes called Bulldog gets into a problem while on the flight and in the middle of the night, Dusty then goes on to help Bulldog land safely and that is why he turns out to be the last one to land yet again but Bulldog is really grateful to him for helping him. There he also goes on to meet one of his fans. The fan goes on to give Dusty a piece of advice, telling him to take out his pipes if he wants his flight to get better. Dusty does just that and his flight actually gets better. The next level of the race gets started and in this flight, we go on to see that the other planes are starting to have defects and they're not able to fly too high, which is why Dusty ends up taking the advantage of this, and he's the first one to land in India. Dusty goes on to celebrate his victory, much to the annoyance of Rip, who's used to being the top one, but this time it's Dusty's name all over the news, and Rip is frustrated. On the other hand, we see Skipper trying to fly, but because he is so old, he's unable to. Rip, on the other hand, decides that he's going to have to come up with some kind of plan to take down Dusty. We then see Chug making small planes and selling them as toys. Ishani, on the other hand, goes on to congratulate Dusty. She tells him that they're in India, so they should definitely go and see the Taj Mahal. Dusty agrees, and both of them fly to the Taj Mahal, and Dusty is fascinated to see everything. The next part of the race is about to get started, and they have to fly to Nepal from India. And Ashani goes on to tell him that if he's scared of heights, this could be a problem for Dusty because they're going to have to fly over high mountains since they're going to Nepal. She then tells him that he can take the tunnels if he gets too scared from the heights. When he makes his way to Nepal, he sees many mountains that are too high for him and his phobia of heights kicks in right away. But he remembers what Ashani told him, so he ends up taking a tunnel after all. When he gets into the tunnel, he realizes that this tunnel is too narrow for him, and on top of that, he sees a train approaching that's just about to get into the tunnel. The moment the train is about to get inside the tunnel, Dusty manages to get out, and he's just inches away from getting crushed. He makes a sigh of relief and gets to the point where they are supposed to report into Nepal. He's told that he is the first one to get there, and Dusty's over the moon. All the other planes also get there, and all of them are shocked to see him there. They have no idea how Dusty managed to get out of that tunnel. He then goes on to his Shani and tells her that she gave him really bad advice. He says that he could have gotten crushed by the train there, and that this is when Ishani goes on to reveal that she was actually trying to screw him over. She's in league with Rip, who wanted to kick Dusty out of the race at any cost. Dusty's really upset to learn about this. This is when the next level begins, and on this level they have to fly to China from Nepal. We see that Dusty is now pretty famous. People have been chanting his name, and he's everywhere in the news. Just like that, Dusty is again the first one to get to the destination, as he lands in China before everyone else. When the other planes get there, he goes on to talk to Skipper, and Skipper tells him that the next part of the race is the most difficult one, because he's going to have to fly over the Pacific Ocean, as in the next part, he has to fly from China to Mexico. The new flight begins, and one of the other planes who is working with Rip goes on to break Dusty's antenna. Dusty's now flying on the ocean, and he's not able to understand his directions. He keeps flying above the ocean, trying to figure out which way to go. And on top of that, his fuel is about to end now. As Dusty thinks that his time is near, he's approached by two fighter jets. Those jets see that Dusty needs some help, so they tell him to follow them. Dusty follows them to a nearby ship and lands there. This is a Navy ship, and he goes inside and sees that there are pictures of many fighter jets in there. He also sees Skipper's picture there. He is approached by the captain, who goes on to tell Dusty that there's going to be a storm soon. 
They tell Dusty that if he wants to fly, he's going to have to fly right away, and they go on to repair him and give him a really good launch. Dusty takes flight and his speed is really good. On the other hand, we go on to see Rip, who's talking to media. He's all praises for Dusty because he doesn't want anyone to know that he's the one who screwed him over. On the other hand, Dusty has discovered on the Navy ship that contrary to Skipper's own descriptions, he only flew one mission during the war. Before he can obtain answers, a thunderstorm strikes, and he's forced to depart by the carrier crew. However, he ends up crashing into the Pacific Ocean and is severely damaged. Dusty is transported to a repairing workplace, where he meets all his friends, too. Dottie takes a look at his plane and goes on to say that it's in really bad condition. Skipper's also there, and Dusty goes on to ask him why did he lie to him about having done so many missions, when in actuality, he went only on one mission. Skipper tells everyone to leave the room because he wants to speak to Dusty alone. He starts telling his story, saying that they were on a mission when they were attacked by the enemy. He goes on to say that all the other fighter jets flying alongside him died right away, and only Skipper was smart enough to make it out of that attack alive. But after that attack, he got really defected, and he was never able to fly again. He says that this is the reason he has not been able to go on another mission. And hearing this, Dusty gets really sad and leaves. Dusty considers dropping out of the race, but is encouraged to continue by many of his fellow competitors who donate parts to repair the damage he sustained. As Shawnee also gives Dusty her new propeller, reconciling their friendship. Dottie then goes on to tell Dusty that he's become a proper racer now, so he should not be working in the fields anymore because he's too important now. Bulldog also comes to Dusty and goes on to gift him a new pair of wings and wishes him good luck for the race. Dusty's now ready to get back into the race yet again, and Rip gets to know that Dusty's ready to take part in the race and that does not sit well with him. And he yet again tries to come up with a plan to get Dusty out of the way once and for all. The last round of the race is about to get started and Skipper ends up hearing the whole evil plan of Rip against Dusty. They have to race back to New York from Mexico as it's the last part of the race. The race begins and Rip plots to finish off Dusty. He attacks Dusty in the air but is thwarted by Skipper who regains his courage to fly. Dusty conquers his acrophobia when he rides a jet stream, and nearing the finish line, Rip slows for the cameras that allows Dusty to pass him and win, and Rip crashes into portable toilets. Dusty is congratulated by his friends, and Skipper thanks him for giving him the confidence to fly again. Skipper rejoins the Navy, flying one last time with Dusty, and with that, the movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on that notification bell, and leave a like to help the channel out. And thank you for watching.